Hello YouTube, Triumph Guy here today and today I'm going to be talking to you about contaminating contamination in the coolant. Okay, there's nothing worse, open up the cooler and take the top out or whatever and you realise it's contaminated with either oil, um, sort of debris or it's an off colour. So I'm going to go through the three main ones is sort of minerals, etc, oil and uh, potential exhaust gases, um, head gasket. So if you um, if you do notice that you've got any of them, then obviously you're more than welcome to skip to them parts. But yeah, let's get to it. So tap water can cause lime scale and other mineral um, buildup. It can clog stuff like your heater core, uh, then that won't work correctly. So whenever you do uh, top up your coolant, always use deionized water with the manufacturer spec coolant. In this case, it's G12 for this particular car. Now. A few other things on my Spitfire, I noticed like rust contamination. That was just because it was an old radiator, hadn't been flushed through properly. So what do I do? Change the radiator, change the uh, coolant hoses and all that good jazz. So that's the first bit, water contamination. Not too much of an issue, right? Now we're gonna move on to oil contamination. So oil contamination, what will happen is because oil is a different density to coolant and water, it should float to the top in here, okay? Also, this could be um, foamy from if the contamination has gone uh, coolant into oil. One of the first things you're going to check is this, your oil filter housing, okay? It's secured with four Torx bolts. And then, but more importantly down there is the oil cooler. Now I'll upload some pictures now. So the oil cooler on a VW is attached to the filter housing. Now on certain VWs, the filter housing is metal, gray, shouldn't fail. However, um, nine times out of 10, they are plastic, and very brittle. Uh, as you can see, is a couple of examples of before and after um, where they have failed, okay? Now, this is a pretty bad picture of Drew. It can fail in four places, essentially. So the gasket here where it meets the engine block, which would be there. Yeah, it could be any of these which fail. Um, the filter housing itself, the gasket where it meets the oil cooler, which is ribbed, and I'll put a picture up of what that should look like there. And then the oil cooler itself. Now, the other place it can fail is the head gasket. These only really fail if the car is at extreme sort of temperatures. So if you're driving around, it's at 90 degrees and you've got, and it's always been at 90 degrees and it doesn't go above that, I'd say your head gasket probably hasn't failed and it, it, it probably um, lies in that oil cooler. What you can do is you can take the oil cooler off. You can take it off, inspect these gaskets, etc., etc. You can um, pressure test the oil cooler, see if there's any leaks. But if it's off for the sake of 60 quid for the plastic one, I think the metal ones are more, um, depending on model, they're like 100 quid. I'd probably just swap the whole thing out, to be honest, and, and do an oil change while you're at it. Anyway, head gasket. So obviously the blue is dictated by the, the coolant, jackets, and the oil. The black hash bits is the oil, okay? Now, if there is a split between here or here, or wherever, then you're gonna get mixture between the oil and the coolant. We're, unlike the oil cooler, the oil cooler will have a high pressured oil at this stage. So you'll only really see coolant, um, oil in the coolant rather than coolant in the oil. Whereas at this stage, these are the return feeds. So they're, they're sort of equal in pressure. So I'd say if there is sort of milky signs on your oil then this has probably happened where they're sort of mixing okay but like i said i'd only investigate this as last case scenario because this would mean that there, it's been subject to some serious overheating for this to blow and then crack now there's also a transmission cooler on a lot of vws that looks very similar to the oil cooler how unlike obviously older cars where there's a dipstick for the transmission you you'd have to sort of drain the transmission on sit again, it's sort of fairly low um, pressurized system. Drain it, it probably needs to do it anyway. I know it's a lifetime transmission fluid, it's a lie. I'd actually just swap it out, see if there's any contamination. Again, the oil should sit on top of the coolant and there should be a um, pretty even sort of divide. 
it would probably need changing anyway, so you might as well just do it for the sake of however much it is, 20, 30, 40 quid for a new transmission all depends on what it is and the quantities, all right? Now, the last contaminant is a gas contaminant from head gasket, again, blow between the cylinders and the coolant, okay? Now, this can be tested using a special head gasket tester. Basically, you put it in, I will do a video on it if you if you are getting enough interest in the comments. It's a special tester, you put it inside the coolant header tank, you squeeze the, the bubble, and then the, the color of the liquid will change depending on if it's contaminated with oil or exhaust gases. If it is contaminated with exhaust gases, then you'll get this. But also, you'll be burning coolant at a fairly rapidish rate and you'll notice smoke coming out the exhaust and it should be a fairly sweet smell. If you ignore a head gasket issue, it will get worse, okay? So this, these gaps will get bigger and bigger and bigger until the car just won't start or won't work um, and it will just overheat instantly and it is a nightmare. And then you've got to get the whole, well, you'll, you'll have to get the whole head checked anyway, but it will have to get re-skimmed and it is a bit of a nightmare. It can run off the vehicle. So just make sure that if you do think it is this, get it captured early. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, bang them in the comment section. And as I said before, please do not ignore any of these faults. They will lead to more serious faults. Um, I am here to help if you do need, if you endorse it, then yeah, again, I can actually personally come and have a look at your car. If there's any subjects you want me to cover in the future, please bang them in the comments and I will make content on them. But yeah, see you on the next one.